And welcome to episode 10. You've made it through 10 episodes. It's the, it's Life's about the small victories. But um, of Conversations with the Al. I'm Mike McGrainer, your host. I have Vitas Barzoukas, uh, co-host. I have Fritz the Night Owl, the man of the hour. And with us always is Christian <laughs> on the tech hello, in hello. the background. Christian's going to be chiming in on, because uh, we're going to continue our conversation from the last episode, which was a couple weeks ago. But since then, we have done Psycho at the State Theater, thanks to all that came out. Uh, but we were on a roll about movies, and we are going to talk about our first four episodes that we've shown for the 50th anniversary. But we're going to kind of pick up from where we were last week. And uh, we don't remember. So let's just go in and, uh, and do, some, do some cool stuff. So uh, the big thing is movies, movie stars. We covered a lot. Um, and some of our favorite movies and clips and things like that. But Fritz shared with us all that jazz and, and different movie moments uh, that he loved. Uh, Vitus chimed in. Christian barely chimed in. He's going to chime in more this episode because we're going to talk about the movies we love, the performances we love, and then we're going to get into talking about our 50th anniversary shows and where we're going from here and everything for the year of Night Owl. Thank you for making it so special for us so far. Uh, the big thing I want to start with is... I know a lot of you are coming to the screenings. I know there's one thing that's kind of missing from the screenings, and that's the physical version of the owl. Uh, you've asked me about it through emails on Facebook and at the shows. You've shown up with items for him to sign. Fritz did retire in 2018 from personal appearances. It's important to keep coming to these screenings. He will be beaming down from Zontar and bringing you the best movies on the screen. Uh, but I want to flip it over to Fritz. And he'll kind of explain what's going on so that we can kind of answer this final. And, and, and uh, so you understand that he's not just sitting these out. Uh, he's very appreciative of you for coming to these screenings and keeping the owl alive. But, uh, yeah. Well, very, very quickly, I have a very, very difficult mobility and balance problems. I walk like I'm a drunk Although I don't, I haven't had anything to drink. Keeping my balance is very, very difficult. And walking, say any more, more than ten yards, uh, I need assistance. And quite frankly, I'd rather have people remember me as they see me on the screen or remember me from Channel Ten. I, I ego, I just wouldn't want to be seen in public. Uh, today. I mean, I don't look like the hunchback of Notre Dame or anything. <laughs> it's just that the mobility problems and a few other uh, uh, physical ailments are keeping me uh, as a couch potato rather than in the old days going out and BSing with you guys till about two in the morning, etc. So uh, I'm with you there in spirit, but sadly I just can't make the physical, uh, I, I couldn't do like a whole night uh, of uh, of a night owl presentation. Uh, for example, I couldn't even make the ride from Columbus to London, or it would even be difficult to go from Columbus to the Grand View or Thirty Five or the Ohio or what have you. So that's 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 why uh, I'm not there, and I hope you understand. But. Uh, I've I've entered I've entered Geezer Dumma now uh, I I enjoy the reminiscence of days gone by and my 15 minutes of fame are still there, and he's still rocking and he's still creating content for us so <clears throat> we can at least appreciate the fact that Night Owl isn't dead in the water uh, we will keep it going as long as we can and as long as you keep supporting it so thank and you and I'm so seeing much. a lot of movies on TV that are just terrific oh there you go yeah it, it's it's fair that we've used. Many years of Fritz, and we need you know he gets now to catch up on things he missed <laughs> many 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 times over. So, um, but we started the 50th anniversary off. <coughs> We've now done one show at each venue that we did in our run, and in the order that we did it in our run, that was not planned. That's just how it happened. Uh, London State Theater chose their episodes. Gateway chose their episodes, and uh, Studio 35 and Grandview chose their episodes. Out of our 40, each theater, each venue gets 10. 
Uh, Gateway actually has eight because we're doing two screenings, one at the Ohio uh, in July and one elsewhere, uh, which we'll have more info on later. But um, you'll get to see <coughs> every episode that wasn't our first two seasons, which you can buy on Blu-ray. You pre-order season two for the end of May, and season one is available now. And uh, so you can see a whole lot of Al this year and relive the glory days and everything like that. I do want to address a couple other things that people have said online. Uh, everyone who says, why isn't the show coming back to Channel 10? Bring it back to Channel 10. I promise you, <laughs> if there was a way to be on TV, we would have figured it out. <laughs> um, we have had meetings with Channel 10. It's a different world now. Right, so, and of course, yeah. there there are union problems that uh, are are have to be considered, and the uh, oh, what do you want to call it? The rights to th- things and the cost of the movies much more expensive. Yeah, you, yeah. you that, that's why local stations rarely show movies anymore. Is because people can see them on HBO or Turner Classic or American Movies. You know. They're just on there. It's not like in the days when I was on Channel 10 and there was 4, 6, 10, and 34. That was it for television watching. And in those days, it was regarded that movies were too good to be shown on television. So that a first-run movie that showed uh, in year one wouldn't show up in television till about local television till about year four or five after they were that old. And um, so, so a lot of reasons why. Uh, that's one of the reasons I don't do a jazz show on uh, the internet is I can't afford to pay the rights to play the music, the BMI and the ASCAP rates. And the prices keep going up. Like, for example, your up. admission tickets that you're buying to Night Owl this year, a lot of that money is going right toward the booking of the movie because the studios charge X amount of percentage, X amount of dollars. And we have the rights for one week, so we can show it one time at the venues. I mean, we can show it seven days in a row, but the venues aren't going to do that. But we have to pay for basically the rights of the movie for one screening, and uh, it's very expensive. But it means it means the world to us that you have shown up so far to four screenings now, that you care about the show, that I hope you're at least getting to relieve uh, some nostalgia, and you're bringing your kids and people that haven't seen the show and – you know, we can make this thing live as long as we want it to, uh, as long as with your support. So thank you so much. Uh, so let's start uh, at what we've done this oh, year. So be, yeah, be, Before we get to that is I would really be interested in the age group of people that are listening to this um, and comments on, on what they're hearing. But I would be curious as to how many people my age, which is one F-stop short of 90, uh, (laughs) and I've got great-grandchildren who are like in third and fourth grade. So I've really got a wide spectrum of people that I know and deal with, and I'd just like to know, you know, who listens to this, why, and what would you like to hear? There you go. Contact. How do they they contact us? Facebook.com slash Fritz the Night Owl. Keep in mind, night is N I T E. That's another thing. It's not N I G H T. It's N I T E. So Facebook.com slash Fritz the Night Owl. If you message that page or Facebook.com slash Night Owl Theater, theater is T R E, not T E R. Uh, we just like to keep you on your toes. But uh, <laughs> if you message either of those two accounts, well, that's courtesy right John Haldy and, and Channel 10 yes. is the N I T E and the uh, R E rather yeah. than the E R. Yeah, and it differentiates it a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so any questions, comments, or uh, anything like that, send to the Facebook pages. Uh, I know a lot of you sometimes either hate Facebook or aren't on social media, but I will tell you that Facebook still gives you the freedom to do a little bit more than Twitter, Instagram, or anything else. So we were able to post our events, keep in contact with everyone. Um, So even if you're on just to pay attention to Night Owl, uh, visit us at those pages, message us, and... uh, yeah, just feel free to interact. I mean, if you have questions for Fritz, send them. We'll get to it on future podcasts, or we'll just look at the feed as we're doing it. But uh, thank you so much <coughs> for your support. I will get over this cough by the end of the year, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, I will start smoking those by the case. Right? You know? Never smoked in my life, and, and I get cursed with this cough. Uh, but 
Uh, let's talk about the comeback this year, our first show uh, at the beginning of March, because um, we, we showed Robocop first, and that was at Grandview Theater. Grandview is the venue that we started the show at in 2010, so it was nice that we started it for our 50th, uh, and that was Robocop. And Vitus, you were there for this. Um, I was. And I was there, and uh, wow, what a fun party that turned out to be. Yeah. Well, what was your takeaway from? I know I'm like living and breathing this stuff, but you get to actually come enjoy these. <laughs> no, well, it's it's cool because um, you know you're just watching everybody who's um, very passionate about Fritz. So the people that sat next to me, there were four women that sat next to me. Three of them, to answer like part of your question, Fritz, three of them were younger. They were probably in their 30s, these young women. And I don't know if they were there with an older woman that may, may have been like the mom. Um, but no, but they were loud. They were rowdy. Um, it was different than the Blade Runner crowd. So basically, Fritz was like Fog Hat, and they were like the groupies that showed up. <laughs> right, like yeah, the sure. mother brought her daughters, and like we're gonna get, we're gonna meet <laughs> right, Fritz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wait, I must mention that until we showed it in the theater, I never saw the finished version of a Night Owl theater movie that we made in the 21st century. That is true, and that is, I would know what the effect was going to be, and Mike and I would talk about it and so forth but i never saw the finished product until the night we were showing it at the theater um yeah. and that's because at channel 10 i could see myself integrated with the special effect but uh, the 21st century version which has better technical or more advanced technical things i do everything in front of a green screen Right, and so I never see, as I say, the the intermixture that Mike does with the uh, visual effect that we're going yeah. to use. So I see it at the same time that people do, and I like to hear. Okay, do they laugh when I go for a laugh? Um, well, and what does what does good, the crowd feel? Well, what's, yeah. what's fun is that if you. So th I think it's like maybe th there's like three instances where one, as soon as we cut to the the cut scene. The audience knows, okay, he's probably going to appear here, and they start laughing already. Yeah, they're starting to guess. They're starting to la laugh, like they're going to guess, right. like they know exactly where you're going to appear in this funny way. Other times, it's like, you know, with Blade Runner, when you first appear in the screen of the the um, the test and the little void comp whatever they call it whatever it is like and we see your glasses. Your yeah, it's just your eye, and people start giggling, and then they see you sitting there like... You know, like you're part of the exam, right. and they then they start laughing, and then other times it is like you know, it's it's the dialogue, it's whatever you're saying. Right. Well, in in Psycho, you just see my shadow in the window of the Bates Motel, and right. you, you hear and you hear my narration, but you don't see me physically other than this tiny yeah. shadow moving around in the lit window of the Bates Motel. Which so, I so, love because that reminds me more of Night Owl, like Channel well, Ten, where you like just give a little like. You're able to just be a little bit more subtle with it and not so like. Well, it's kind it, of interesting. That was one of the that was one of the cuts on the tape that won us our first Emmy. It's true. You know, it's 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 kind of fun as one of the being I guess one of the creators, but yeah. where you're curious, like, okay, what are they going to laugh at? Is it going to be the dialogue? Oh, yeah. Is it going to be the visuals? Is it gonna, like for, for Blade Runner? You know, you were one of the um, sex Take down your hair, darling. No, 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 no. It was the you. You were one of the like sex spots, or what was it? Where oh, the the profile screen. Yeah, yeah, but but because well, you know, pleasure, pleasure model, pleasure model, pleasure model. Yeah, so it's right. going around, and you're like, so it's well, that hasn't like, changed in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why we do the right. podcast. So no, so then when you mention it, and at the bottom it says like pleasure model, and you know it's your picture. Right. I mean, the audience laughed, and that was. And you even hear M.M. at Walsh like standard pleasure model, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's it's um, so it got a, a good laugh, and you know, yeah. That's a good. That's a good. That was a Tobias Rediger episode for effects, and uh, I know that you know we we watch the movies and we talk about where we're going to put Fritz and everything, and then the effects guy is the one that makes it happen <coughs> but i can tell you that it is uh so gratifying that people get a kick out of these uh things and i are able to see it and i don't know if you noticed it robocop and, and definitely wayne's world but um it when it would kind of get quiet they you would hear people go that's really awesome 
Mm-hmm. Like they would almost they would see how he put him in and sort yeah. of like I think what they were thinking it was going to be and what they saw they're like oh they put time into this well you know yeah, as opposed but, to like this. but but there were surprising things we did now two of my all time favorite effects we did were in Jaws where the lady which we slap- haven't shown this year yet but where the lady slaps me mm-hmm. it looks like I am in the film and she actually slaps me one hundred percent. And yeah. th- then, um, you'll see that later. the uh, in June. I've, oh, oh, and, and the th- I think we were among the very, very first to wear like where I light Audrey Hepburn's cigarette. Oh my God! She I think that is one of them. the first thing internationally where a local person was inserted and interacted with the the person in the movie. Yeah, I well, mean, that, I know on Channel Audrey 10 Hepburn you did that a little bit. Charade. Like, you know, someone would say a line and you would respond to them, but I think they would say the line and then become a still, and you would right. respond to them, whereas this is like, you light her cigarette. Right. Uh, it's and it's she really actually, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, but like, the, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, but but like I say, the, the, the slapping scene in Jaws and the lighting Audrey's uh, cigarette were two of the effects that I just thought were A- unseen or undone by any other TV personality or movie personality yeah. ever. Yeah. And and I always liked the fact that, that even in the Channel 10 show, we did things that had not been done, done on TV before. Well, we like to challenge ourselves, too, to where, I mean, I, I remember putting you through hell for uh, Labyrinth. We had 22 shot setups in that. And Who was the guy's name I couldn't pronounce? Oh, which guy? It was a Labyrinth? director. It was a director with a Spanish name, and I. We oh, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, <laughs> we must have. Yeah, done. it was the Godzilla. Maybe the Godzilla episode. I forget. Anyway, we, yeah. we must have done about ten or twelve takes on that. <laughs> Just get it. I couldn't say. And you'll that. be able to see every one of them on that episode. <laughs> yeah, there's some great. If you stay, this is the other thing. If you stay after the credits of the movie. You will always see more Fritz. There's always a last break. And a lot of times, if there were any good outtakes from that shooting of that episode, we'll include them in the credits. So uh, some of them include yeah, four-letter definitely words. Don't rush out! <laughs> don't rush out when the movie is over. You'll you'll get some more Fritz if you stay, which it says on screen beforehand. So yeah, but yeah, no. Um, another thing that I've heard people react to at the screenings is we show the Channel Ten story on you. The, oh the, right, Yolanda Harris. And when it talks about he even appeared in a DC comic with Superman. There's always a reaction. Oh, my God. People react. Like, everyone's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, so I will, I do want to say, um, and is you it, saw this as Psycho Paul, as well. Power of Shazam number 20. Number 20 is this conversation with Superman, but you were mentioned and or in five different issues. And we will be offering those at the shows. And we have them on the website. So when you come to the shows, you'll see them at the booth. Uh, if you were at Psycho, you saw them, and then they'll be going forward um it's really cool and and uh eric hartzell who we had on an earlier episode restored and grabbed from channel 10 all the stuff that they had and we've got outtakes of fritz we have uh you know a lot of cool stuff from the original show one thing i want to gauge you guys on to see if you're interested is uh lost episodes of night owl theater we have six that were never aired um that were shot but never aired and I am putting those together as episodes. Uh, if you remember the cast marathons we did together, I'm looking to do something like that this summer, early fall, and maybe get us all together online to watch Fritz as well. But you'll be seeing 70s, 80s Fritz, uh, not current Fritz, but uh, I'll piece together the movies from the Double Chiller segments and things, and we'll start having an online thing too on the weeks that we don't do shows. So this entire year is celebrating 50 years of Fritz uh, and everything that your nostalgia loves uh, we're going to we're going to be doing this year so thank you for taking that journey with us we can get through the entire year only with your support so coming to these shows is a big deal so thank you so much and uh, for those of you that came to Psycho I got to say London is not that far from Columbus if you're in Columbus and you drive to Reynoldsburg you've dro- you've driven further than London so I see a lot of comments online <coughs> saying London's out of town, London's very far. 
Uh, it's not. It's 25 minutes away. It's an awesome theater, a historic theater. Opened two years, I believe, after Studio 35 even. So um, right around the year that Fritz was born. So uh, really cool place. Rob and Shannon, the owners, uh, cook some great food. So keep coming out to our London shows. Keep coming out to our Gateway shows on campus. Um, that was a place that hosted us for more than a year. Um, and, you know, I know the times vary. Our late shows, our fun shows are Grandview and Studio. Uh, campus shows are 9 p.m. Uh, so you'll be home by midnight. And the London shows are even earlier. So any time that you take to drive outside of Columbus will be made up for in the showtime start and the showtime end. So keep coming, keep supporting Fritz. And this is, uh, we thank you so much for what you've done so far. So as we continue on, so you were at Robocop, Vitus, yes. and you had fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, you were at Blade Runner. I was. not at Wayne's World. Right. Wayne's World was a gigantic party. Uh, it felt like Wayne and Garth were there hanging out with us. Like I mean, it was insane <coughs> how fun it was. And we showed the new 4K remaster, which if you've seen Wayne's World, there was the no stairway to heaven scene, and he always plays this weird sound, and then it says no stairway. Yeah. In the original theatrical cut, he actually played the opening chords of Stairway to Heaven. And then Led Zeppelin was like, you're going to oh, yeah, pay yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every home video release, every cable release has been changed. And I showed the 4K, uh, the original theatrical. So oh. when he started playing Stairway, the audience went nuts. It was That's cool. Because they noticed that, oh, this is not like Yeah, the yeah, one. yeah. Oh, that's really cool. So, um, And you'll see that. Like Psycho uh, last week, Psycho was the uncut version. For the first time in a theater, that was the original version as it as it showed, not the home video version, the cable version you've seen for years. That was Alfred Hitchcock's uncut cut. So we definitely try to do that for Night Out when we show movies. So give you something you aren't used to seeing. But anyway, thank you. Our appreciation is there, and uh, let's get back to talking about movies. So let's let's get Christian. <laughs> <laughs> to talk well, about we're not getting christian we're getting christian to talk about we're not doing a sermon <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> uh, let's get christian uh, up in here if so if if i'm talking about favorite movies yes. uh, uh favorite m moments in movies and i'm over here listening to all you guys thinking to myself i wow <laughs> um there are so many but i mean obviously there's the iconic uh, you know, my my dad was a big movie fan. Uh, he was from England. He came over from England, came on the boat, you know, all that stuff. And he would take me every... And I never took my sisters. He just took me. Oh, wow. Every opportunity he could get. So the first movie I ever saw in my life was King Kong. Oh, my God. The Jessica Lange version. Okay. okay so 76? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like okay. four. Yeah. I was like three or four. And... Uh, and so I was like, okay, yeah, this is cool. I like movies. And then they did the reissue of Jaws. <laughs> that was the second movie I ever saw. Yeah. Funny you mentioned that. We'll get to Vitus in a second. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, there's the scene in Jaws, and I was I, I remember hiding under the seats mm -hmm. because it was it freaked me out so bad. But I love the scene, and it's the scene in the very very beginning. Where yeah. she is swimming, and you don't see that. It's just genius film. You don't see the shark. Right. right. It's all in your imagination. It's all up here. And yeah. my five-year-old brain exploded all over the freaking, all over the place. Yeah. When she pops up and does the hyperventilating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is one of the most terrifying things because it feels so. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for a long time, people, beach visitations dropped off immensely yeah. after Jaws. And it was like in Psycho when Janet Lee gets stabbed in the shower, showers and shower curtains yeah. became very, had a big, big drop off in, uh, in use. Yeah. I mean, people would take showers with the curtains yeah. sort of pulled back so they could see the <laughs> oh, yeah. see the door in the in the bathroom and so forth. So, well, well, I, what, you know, what I, I was going to ask is, how scared were you at your age seeing uh, King Kong and Jaws? King Kong, I was fine. I, I really don't remember much mm -hmm. fear on that. I just remember like, wow, that looks so real because that was. I mean, I'd seen the original like 
later on in life. Yeah. And I just have this kind of real bond to that movie because it was the first one I ever saw. And it was, I was like, I know I had a, I know I had a poster of Farrah Fawcett on my wall. Everyone, you know that poster? Yes. Yes. The one that everybody oh, yeah, yeah, had? Yeah, yeah. Um, I know I, I, I know did. somebody that knows the photographer. That took <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but I, Jessica Lang blew me. I'm, I'm like five or four or five going, oh. Well, you need to watch all that jazz. She's right, all right, that jazz. right. I've yeah. never seen all that. She jazz. is such that. an interesting, like her choices that she makes. Right. She, like, like she always seems like a little out there, but right. it works for sure. everything she does. She did for you what Jane Russell and <laughs> Sophia Loren <laughs> did for me. Yeah. yeah. Set my standards and okay, what do I look for physically in a lady? So, so I for Jane Russell, Sophia Loren. Right top of the list <laughs> so like i you know growing up in cleveland um you know i grew up like right next to lake erie and um after seeing jaws <laughs> i would not go in the water and my parents were like it's a lake it's not salt water you know they're explaining the whole science but behind mm. sharks don't live in lakes they're like in salt water but i still by the way not. it caught on fire he jaws yeah yeah yeah, 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 that, yeah right like i was fine with that but i was not going to swim in it because right. of because of possible sharks yeah well, it's like he would go on later to say, you know, that's based on a true story. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? And, and, and I'm like, it, uh, really? <laughs> right. Uh, thanks. Yeah. So did you know, because it wasn't until I was older when I really sunk into that Indianapolis scene. Did you know as a kid, did that scene mean something to you? No. The way it does as a No, adult? not now. It's a completely. Right. Oh, my God. It's, it's, you're lost in that scene. I mean, right. you're, I swore to God for years that they showed flashbacks because of how vivid. Oh, yeah, he painted you know, like, it. Yeah. Like, I swore I saw what he was talking about, and no. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So big. Yeah. I, I had heard about this uh, over the years, and, uh, there's a movie, I forget, I think it's on uh, Smithsonian Channel called Air Warriors, and they have one on the uh, PBY Catalina, which was the first Navy plane to spot the survivors who had been in the water for four or five days. And either they had footage of it or they recreated it. But I mean, now I saw this maybe a year ago, absolutely terrifying can you imagine being in the water for 24 hours salt water nothing to drink what do you do about the bathroom you're worried about sharks you yeah. see your compadres being devoured by sharks or drowning major league scare oh yeah, yeah. no i mean it, it's horrifying it, it, you wonder how these guys 18 19 20 years old that's how old these most of these guys were on, on ships like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm terrified of nature in general. Like, I'm definitely, I like my hotels. Like, my <laughs> idea of camping is sitting around the campfire, getting that smell in, cooking your hot dogs. And then when your friends go to sleep in their tents, I go to the Hampton. Well, my idea of roughing it is if the hotel doesn't have a bar. There you go. So, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, Vitus and I, like, we've traveled a lot together. And, like, that hotels are important. Yeah. I mean, it, the kind of hotel is important. Sure. Yeah. I remember I, once when we were... Everyone was sold out of everything, and something happened. You got stuck at a hotel that was like a like, shithole, just scary as Sorry. hell. Yeah, no, a total <laughs> shithole. Sorry, um, am I allowed to swear on this? Well, no, we're candid. It's kind of, <laughs> but <clears throat> but I remember like you know you're like nope, nope. Yeah, I think we actually probably shared a room. No, which is something room. you no, and I no, don't the, do. No, like, no the one know. the one place was you said that the um, convention gave us. Um, like cheap one rooms at yeah. a uh, what was it? Nights in? No, we, I wasn't staying. At Nights and so I remember I drove. I up, won't stay. At Nights I drove up and I was like, nope. You know, I'm too old to be staying at a place like this. And so well, it was kind of interesting. In '74, the, the Sicilian side of my family had a big reunion in Virginia, Minnesota, and my wife and I and one or two sons went uh, up to this reunion and we stayed at a hotel in Bowabic, Minnesota. And this motel was like six house trailers put together into one long house trailer that had like six uh, rooms in it. Yeah. Seven dollars a night. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I mean, to this 
to this day, my late, well, I shouldn't say to this day, but all through her life, my wife, late wife, never let me forget that <laughs> I made her stay at the Buwabik Motel yeah. with the uh, two of my sons. Yeah. So, But a I, great time. All right. Oh, my God. For years, I was on tour with the bands and different things, and we had gone to Albuquerque or through Albuquerque, and I was like, Albuquerque's beautiful, Arizona's great, New Mexico's great. And I was championing Albuquerque, and then it was quite some years later, but Breaking Bad came out, and I watched the show, which I love the show. But I was like, that's not Albuquerque. Albuquerque's not that trashy. Albuquerque doesn't have a drug problem. And so... I was traveling on my own, and I was going to L.A., and I was driving out, and I booked – I would just guess where I was going to stop every night, and I booked a hotel in Albuquerque, and there were people shooting up heroin across the street. I mean, I was like, oh, yeah, sure. oh, Breaking Bad is real. I mean, right. it, it, but I don't know what happened, but um, I guess every town has ups and downs, but it was a motel that uh, everything else in the area was sold out for some reason. And I have a rule where I don't stay in any motel or hotel that you drive up to. I got to go inside and up the elevator, and I'm fine. Sure. But it has to be that hotel. And this one was like, I drove up, the headlights were on the door of the room, and I'm like, I'm going to die. Yeah. So I got in the room, I put the chair against the door, and I like sat down on the bed, which was just like a board. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was, I got through the night, but uh, yeah. Ooh, never again. Well, well, let me ask those of you who travel. Now, in the late 30s, 40s, when uh, my mother, my dad was overseas, my mother and my two brothers, we would drive to uh, up to northern Minnesota. And in those days, they had what they called tourist homes, which were private homes where people on the road would go and they would spend overnight. So tourist homes were very big and also were motel places that had cabins rather than a big building. And a lot of these motels or a lot of these places had a theme, like there would be one that would be sort of like an all the everything was like Native American influence or uh, old Germany or old France. And do these places, tourist homes and mo- mo- cabin motels like that, do they still exist? They exist on Route 66. If you're going the original route, oh yeah, you can stay in a TP and everything. Actually, my okay. wife's there. I think right now. Oh She's wow, thinking that the wigwam. That's it. Yeah. The Wigwam Motel. Yeah, so she's there. So, oh, yeah. my God. So what about tourist for, homes? She's literally on Route 66. Yeah, that's she's, an she's, iconic she's, Yeah, that's where she is I right mean, now. with all of the crazies running around, do tourist homes well, I don't, still I don't exist? Think like well, Airbnb. Or bed, bed and breakfast, yeah. you know, where oh, the, okay. the, the owner is there, and mm-hmm. they'll cook you breakfast, and you're, you're staying in one of the rooms. Or they have Airbnb, know? which means that, like, you live in a house, and then the, the basement floor would be... Where I can check in and stay, but usually oh, I don't think that in. people are. I've like I've seen a lot of Airbnbs, but the the owners like are not there. Yeah, the yeah, owners yeah. are not there, but they are. Sometimes they are, and it's weird. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, it's a shared weird. experience. Yeah, that's... Well, well, like you have your own room, but then the bathroom you share with like a family. I'm it, like, it, nope. Yeah, bed and breakfast I don't do anymore <coughs> because of those experiences where you come down and you're hanging out, you're having breakfast with other people. Yeah, I don't want to do that. At a table, <laughs> not at separate tables, but at the same table. I'm too into Like, I love people when I'm on, but right. when I'm off, I'm like, um, yeah. no, I'm awkward. Yeah. I'm awkward. Too awkward. So, oh, going back to the movies. Yeah. So, Christian, so the, the memories that you have of the movies that you like with Jaws and with King Kong, mm-hmm. how much of that was the movie and how much was that being with your dad? It was a little of both, actually. Good one. That's a little bit of both. Um, you know, my dad worked for the dispatch. Um, he was in composing. So he would lay out the, you know, the, the art hey, sections. Yeah, yeah. That was his, that was his deal. That's awesome. Uh, and he would bring home like the black and white prints of like, so he had, we had Empire Strikes Back, we had Alien, oh, wow. we had Man. Jaws, we had all those, you know, and he would bring them home to me. Yeah. And like, here you go, you know, so I had those all hanging up in my room. So a lot of my love of movies is directly related to the relationship I had with my dad. So then, so it, does your love for certain movies have to do, 
like me personally, I had the same thing with my dad. My dad took me to movies. We watched a lot of movies together. And sometimes for me, when I think about things, I'm like, do I love that movie because of the movie Mm -hmm. or do I love it because I sat next to my dad? you know, on the couch and we watch The Shining together or we watch Jaws together and or Battle of the Bulge. Like I remember watching like old World War Two movies with my dad. And I always wonder, like, you know, would I like this movie as much if it wasn't because of that connection with my dad? Wow. You know, um, so I was just curious, like if, if, you know, for you. No, it was uh, it's it's a little bit of it's a little bit of both. But like, no, I love Star Wars. Like, oh, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, Jaws. Uh, yeah. Don't say anything bad about it. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm going to say bad about it. Venice will kill you. No, I won't say anything bad about it. Uh, but I've seen it since. Yeah. I own it. Yeah. Um, I'm a big person. I, I like to own. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I own it. Physical media. Yeah, I, I, I physical media. I won't take it off streaming. Okay, fine. I have it at home. I'm not worried right. about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely, yeah. I mean, that my dad was so instrumental. I'm actually named after, uh, and I didn't know this, and he was like, you need to go watch The Young Lions. Oh, yeah, Montgomery mm-hmm. Clift and uh, Dean Martin. Yep, Marlon Brando. And, uh, Marlon Brando. Yeah. Fabulous, fabulous movie. The only thing I regretted about uh, Young Lions was that Brando and Clift never had a scene together. Yeah. would have been so great to see those two guys. No, he Brando, acting. he probably hated Clift. And was like, <laughs> no, not doing a scene, change the script. Well, but as I say, it, a terrific movie. Now, yeah, yeah, As yeah. a matter of fact, that was a movie that uh, made Dean Martin, pushed him out of the, oh, this used to be the second rate to Jerry Lewis. Because a lot of times when Martin and Lewis split up, the prediction was Lewis would become a superstar, Martin would be lost in the shuffle. And it was Martin's second movie, I think. First one he bombed in, I forget what it was, but... But it wasn't great. But the second movie, I think, was uh, maybe, no, maybe not the second because there was one he made with Anthony Franciosa, I remember. Anyway, Young Lions was the movie that propelled Dean Martin from n- more than just a song and dance yeah. one-liner guy into, hey, hey, this guy can really act. So were you, were you named after one of the characters? Yeah, I was named after uh, Marlon Brando's character. Wow. In and, what? In Young Lions. Oh, what was his name? Uh, Christian. Oh, Christian. Um, but he was, uh, he's a Nazi. Uh, oh, now my, now right. to, 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 Well, to, how, did that, how did that conversation little, go? A little bit of backstory. As I recall, didn't he have Dancing. blonde hair? Yes. They had yes. Him die? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, my dad was born Too in, bad we're live. Yeah. <laughs> born in England. Uh, um, he was so it's alive when they, background. yeah, when they bombed, I'm now it's all about me. Uh, <laughs> they, that he was alive when they bombed England. He was oh, there. Oh, okay. Wow. So he was, him and his brother were taken out, uh, out into the villages to live with families. So kind of like the, um, what's my called? The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe? Yeah. Uh, like those kids, right? Yeah, they were evacuated out of, uh, out of. Hold on, I need some Turkish delight to have this conversation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> So yeah, I mean it's very it's very real and very raw for him. Uh, wow. So, uh, but Christian has this great turn, where there's a moment where he's and uh, I'm sure you'll remember this. He's sitting and he's watching this battle go on, and he has this like uh, this conscious like he's like this is all wrong, and he turns around and he kind of becomes the hero of the story. Like he's always kind of a conflicted character. Yeah. And I was and, I, and the sad thing is, as I never got to really talk to my dad about it. He was just like, go watch that movie. It'll figure it out. You'll know it when you see it. And I was like, oh, so that's where I got the name. Oh, wow. That's cool. Now, is that what you were left with? Like, I mean, was he pretty much like, were you left figuring it out by watching it? Yeah. And and it's just because I was like, that movie's in black and white. You know what's so funny? (laughs) No, for years, I was like, black and white is boring to me. And then... The older I get, it's like uh, I think Metropolis changed. The, my the mind. best years of our lives is oh, was my, my first one. Yeah. Oh, the last picture show I finally saw for the first time a few years ago in L.A. at Quentin Tarantino's theater, right after Clue Gulliver had passed, and Aww. and they showed the movie. They showed the director's cut of the movie, and I just remember like a friend of mine telling me <coughs> when I was out there, he said, "Listen, if you haven't seen this movie." Uh, you owe it to yourself to go to the last picture show. It's your movie. It's your alley, up your alley. And uh, Timothy Busfield was an actor that I knew from 30-something. And I was like, 
he's the lead in this? Like, I, but they were like, well, also Jeff Bridges, Sybil Shepard. Yeah. And I I caught Moonlighting when I was a kid, and I I liked it, but uh, I'm loving it now. I just got it back into it. But uh, Sybil Shepard, I knew from that. And so seeing this movie, the, the way it, Peter Bogdanovich's use of black and white and and uh, what a what a subtle but like love letter to I mean it, it's this is gonna sound weird when I was growing up I was never a sports fan but Friday nights when high schools would have the football games and the shops would shut down and all this thing it's like I embraced that like I loved knowing everyone was gathered at the football game sure even though I didn't give a crap about football but watching the Last Picture Show made it made me feel like I was sure back in that town. I mean, it, 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 what a beautiful, uh, life goes slower in those places. Right. And being in entertainment, like as we all are, life goes really fast. And, uh, that movie made me wish for things to slow back down. Like as as I get older and kind of look back and, and I don't know what it was, but that movie hit me like a ton of bricks. Well, let me ask you. Yeah. In my day, and even to this day, horror movies are scarier in black and white because I saw the original King Kong, Frankenstein, Dracula, yeah. Wolfman, all of those. We saw them in black and white. And for some reason, the black and white horror films, even to this day, are scarier for me to watch than a color version of well, I think there is I think it's different ways of telling the story. I think that it's a slow build where we're gonna build suspense. <laughs> and I think now like if I watch a zombie movie, there's a lot of you know, I don't know, I don't say jump scares or there's um more visceral like gore or something. It's just different. And I think the old ones kind of built on Building suspense. Well, you never saw the gore in the old the black because, and white. Because kind of, somebody would go to cut somebody's head off, and they would cut away to something else, and then you'd come back and right. you'd see the head in the right. dish or whatever. So you were left to create how right. horrific it was in your mind. Uh, I, I don't think for me it's not black and white. It's the use of shadow. Period. Well, Whether it's color or black and white, if something comes out of the well, dark. I'm I'm sure. I'm grabbing the ceiling. I think it was scarier in black and white when those things yeah. happened, yeah. and shadows and lighting. And, uh, you know, oh. House on Haunted Hill. When we did that, yeah, that shot of the witch, which we kind of made fun of with you, mm-hmm. but that shot of the witch, that's terrifying. Oh it's yeah, terrifying. And, it's and I'm black like, and uh, white. Uh, yeah, that's black and white. And so yeah. So so I do have a question. Well, Fritz, let me show you a movie called Hereditary. <laughs> yeah. So, so, oh, so I have a question for everybody. So <laughs> yeah. when it comes, you mentioned like talking about movie moments. Yeah. And when I was thinking about like trying to come up with a list of movie moments, like that affected me, it was really hard for me to separate the movie itself and or the people I was with when I was watching it. Like whether I'm watching it in a theater and you're with strangers and they all laughed at this moment. Yeah. Is that what made it? Was it the movie itself or was it I'm with somebody special in my life and that's what made that moment, you know, more? You know, a good example is the tears and rain scene in Blade Runner. Right. Because I think if you're by yourself, it hits like a ton of bricks. I think if you're with people, notice the crowd wasn't laughing then. Yeah, sure. People were just... Yeah, yeah. And that, that monologue... Guts you every time. Like, like I, the example I use is that in Raiders of the Lost Ark, when, you know, my father was a gruff man. He was, he took me to all these movies, but, you know, he was impatient. He was, like, I loved my father, but, you know, he was yeah, my dad. Tough guy. Tough guy. But when we saw Raiders, I remember we went to go see Clash of the Titans. Oh, so good. The line was out the door. And my dad was like, I'm not standing in line. But there's another movie across the street, another theater called Raiders of the Lost Ark, and there was no line. Was and this a reissue class of the time? I think so. Or, yeah, okay. they're around the same time. But I remember. Yeah. Oh, I, it was 80s, wasn't it? And Holy I said, shit. and I said, um, I've never heard of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And my dad said, Han Solo's in it. And the second thing he said was, Time Magazine said it was good. And I was like, all right. So I went. So you were already a Star Wars fan? I was already a Star, okay. yeah, Star Wars fan. So I remember I, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm watching Raiders Lost Ark and the scene where he shoots the swordsman. 
you know, when, you know, the guy's doing all, you know, he's got the, the, it's hilarious. It's one of the funniest scenes. Harrison Ford shoots him. My father laughed so hard. (laughs) And all all I really remember of that is watching my father, like looking at him in the seat and he's laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and just feeling that moment with me and my dad were having that shared experience. And was it, the scene, like in the movie, I'm sure but that was part of it. It was the scene because everybody in my age had watched movies and they said, why don't they just, just shoot, just shoot right, him? Right, right. And, and we finally, finally did, we did, saw right. it. And that that was, right. but, 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 for me, what made the moment. Yeah, and with my father, who never had those moments, like, you know, normal life, and he's laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. And that moment is so such a movie moment for me. Maybe not just because of the movie, but because I'm with my dad. Yeah. You know, and... Well, I got to ask you something, and, and I don't mean to... This is not being manipulative. I don't mean to choke you up or anything, but uh, we all have a few beers in us. We That's part of the great thing about this podcast. Um, what would your dad have thought if he'd have seen the Night Owl version, seeing his son's... Like, being involved with the movie he took you to... On a whim because one was well, yeah, too long of a line. Would he have kind of looked at that and been like, "Oh, this is kind of this is neat that because we all the thing I don't realize is how lucky we are to know Fritz, right? And at this point in time, it works, and no other point in time it would have. So to be a part of this thing, I, I just I wonder yeah. I wonder had he gone with you to kind of see it again? Yeah, I would I would yeah he I remember I was in a show in college. Yeah, and I remember, you know, I'm talking to, you know, um, you know, my mom was there. I'm talking to other people who came to see the show. They're congratulating me. And my dad was just standing like off to the side. Yeah. And I remember everybody left and my dad like, you know, came over and he's like, you know, that was, that was really good. Like, great job. And it was like, we had that moment and. So he was supportive. He was very supportive. Well, yeah, he was very supportive. Awesome. And, and so I think um, he would get a huge kick out of. This stuff, he'd be laughing at me. I think he he would get a huge kick out of it. Not not to not to talk about my dad too much, but no, yeah, yeah, after please. I after I graduated from high school, um, and he was didn't have to parent me so much. Yeah. Like you know, we had a much better relationship. Be like buddies. Yeah, well, yeah, as much as you can with your dad, and like you know, we'd have drinks together, have beers together, whatever. So the relationship changed. But when I was a kid and this little brat, of course he's gonna be impatient. He's gonna be that yeah. way, you know. But um. But yeah, so I think just my, my, I guess my main point is wondering whether these movie moments for everybody, you know, who's watching these, how much is it the movie itself, the people that you're watching it with, the moment you're watching it, with, like what's going on in your own life, that that that's why that moment hits. Well, I think you that know. your dad, like me, grew up at a time when movies were really a big thing. There was no television. There was yeah, no internet. Sure. There was no telephone stuff. There was, it was movies, newspaper, comic books, sports, yeah. and that was it. But movies, it was a big deal to go to a movie. Yeah. Whereas now it's sort of like, eh, you know, right. we'll go um, first night or let it run for a while. But I think that your dad, like me, movies were a bigger more important, more enjoyable part of your life when you were growing up because there was nothing to to compete right. with that. Even were pro bit, football didn't compete well, with that, that in the that's 40s. That's exactly and, my next question is, so I know forth. you're a sports fan. Uh, yeah. Were you a sports fan as a child? Yes, because okay. I watched all the games with my dad. <clears throat> Actually, both oh, my parents. My mom okay. was a big sports fan as well. So on Sundays, we go to church. We'd have, you know, we'd go down for coffee afterwards. And then my mom, when we got back, my mom would make us like a brunch, like, you know, it's eggs and whatever. Yeah. And then the whole family, we just sat there and we watched the Browns like every Sunday, you know, and we all sat there and I would just ask my dad questions about the game, you know, and just sit next to him. And but so, then, but but then on Friday yeah. and Saturday nights, yeah. my job, I think the reason why my dad had me was so I could get him beers during, you know, when he's watching things, because I would always get up, run and get him a Blatz or Stroh's. You know, and then he always gave me a sip of, you know, whatever, and we'd watch. My God, like, those are two battle. beers that are, are, are those regional? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard of both of them, wait, but wait, I'm wait. like, they're what, not what your two, standard. What two were they? So Blatz, Blatz and Stros. Oh, okay. Blatz and Schlitz were right. two of the international yeah, they're huge. top the time. beers Schlitz is in the country yeah, at that time. Them. Schlitz, the beer that made yeah. Milwaukee famous. Right. And... um 
it, 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 again, in my day in, in, the, in the 40s, it was Schlitz, Blatz, Pabst, Miller. Not again. I think were the, <laughs> yeah. were the bi- biggie beers. Yeah. I still have uh, Jaws cans in my fridge. Oh, do you really? Yeah, well, when I, when I hear people talk about Schlitz, I'm wondering if Nagaganza is like the, the equivalent of Schlitz. Narragansett is the equivalent of... Narragansett. Narragansett is the um, East Coast equivalent of crappy beer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no I mean dude, I opened a can. I bought it for the Jaws box yeah. at Jungle Gyms. I, and I opened a can and I was like, I could totally drink this. And that's when I knew it was bad. Well, I don't... Because I don't like beer. I, so I don't know if I told you the story, <laughs> but so we went to Cape Cod and I really wanted to get Narragansett because that's what Quint drinks in Jaws. And I'm like, I need Same to get... Same can and everything. Yeah. So I yeah. wanted to get the, the 1974... Your, your, yeah. Because they put out an older can version. So I ran into this liquor store. I found out they had it and I bought a case and I was so excited. And the woman behind the counter could not understand why I was so excited. So I come back to the car and I'm like, honey, you know, tell me my wife, the kids are in the car. I'm like, I just bought a case. And she's like, buy another case. We don't know when the next time we're going to be back. So I run back. I'm so excited. Come back. I'm so excited. I buy a second case. And she's looking at me funny. And she was basically, and I said, well, is this like a shitty beer? And she's like, yeah. Like, I'm getting really (laughs) excited about, like, fine blats or something. That's where you just go, is this Jaws on the box? Yeah, right. Cool. Yeah, cool. But but she she could not understand. It's kind of like old Milwaukee or getting excited about Bush. Like a watered down down beer. Yeah, yeah. And she could not understand why I was so excited. And so I had to have this conversation with this woman, this young woman, like, at this store about the importance of Narragansett. And she's like, oh, okay nerd but you know. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of beers i think <coughs> that it was pabst blue ribbon that had the friday night fights on radio oh and i yeah. remember on on radio i heard i heard the, i wasn't a big sports fan um and as i say my dad was overseas but i remember we would listen to green bay packers games we would. I would listen to the Chicago Cubs for some reason, yeah. and uh, the Army Navy game. We always listened to. And then we moved the to time. Baltimore. We actually, my my dad and Ma would take us to um, the Army Navy game. Oh wow! And at that time, when I was living in Baltimore, the Colts were there, mm-hmm. and so we would see an occasional Colts game. But uh, I would, never was, and even to this day, I'm not a huge sports, sports fan. fan yeah no but you're a voice guy what's interesting about sports because i've never been a sports fan but when um harry carey was around i hey. i was cracking up every time i'm like you know i could be a sports fan i just listen to this guy read the book yeah, yeah. uh because he's always sounded drunk always um not just sounded drunk but he was probably, oh was he, drunk? he was probably pretty drunk yeah um there's a movie by spike lee summer of sam great movie oh yeah but uh Berkowitz, I think, was the serial killer. That yeah. was Summer of Sam. Was that Chicago? Because Oh, shit. Okay. New York. Summer of Sam was, oh, it New, was York. New York. Okay. Because yeah. there was a certain sports announcer he would mention in that movie that was the voice of... Oh. It was probably the... Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the New York version. Sports but, announcers were, big, were big stars in Ritz, those days. With such a great voice that you've got, did you, even though you weren't a sports fan, did you enjoy hearing... Because the announcers, like Vince Scully in LA, all these people had like... The distinctive, voice. distinctive, yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I, 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 that or was... I, I don't, I, I didn't pay that much attention to it other than what they were saying. Okay, yeah. How they sounded, and it was kind of interesting. My older brother was as mildly disinterested in sports as I was. My older brother was a savant who played left guard for Ohio State in 1938. Oh, he could shit. tell you. Oh, okay. And it was Whoa. a thing that, that, uh, he was in. He was stationed when he was in the army. He was stationed in Green Bay during the Lombardi years. He got to meet Lombardi, and occasionally Lombardi would have him go up into the booth with the announcer and do color for the uh, Packers and the Bart Star days and so forth. But my older brother, ah, uh, now he wasn't Is that, that Maury, big in Maury war. Was- yeah, his thing was football. I mean, baseball he liked, but. N- Football, as they say, he was a savant who played left tackle for the Chicago Bears in 1938. He would know, or right, 45. Right, right. Oh, I think you mean your brother played for the Chicago Bears. My older Bears. brother. <laughs> no, 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 no. Say like this guy just more interesting. He, he was, uh, he was uh, just knew a lot about football, local, state, 
uh, national. I mean, it was just his thing. There was one time we went up to, he and I flew up to northern Minnesota for something or other, and we came back, and we were on a local plane, and we had to stop at Green Bay, and it was a Sunday. Now, my older brother has to get back to the Army. He was at Fort Knox, not Fort Knox, uh, 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 an Army camp south south of Fort Knox, I forget what it was, but he had to get back, and he gets off at Green Bay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get an air, I'm going to get a newspaper, he gets the newspaper, and he comes back, and we end up in Chicago, where we're going to split, he's going to go to Fort whatever, and I'm going to go back to Columbus, and he says, you know, I think I'm going to stay here, I'm going to see the Packers game, Oh wow. and I'm going to just take my chances, that I can get a Oh, it was like military planes that if they were flying someplace and you were a military guy, you could get a free ride. So I'm going to take it. And I thought, well, geez, you know, he's got to be back on Monday. It's not like me. I can be back anytime. So he's got to be back Monday morning at X hours. But he goes off and he sees the Packers game. Lombardi invites him to sit on the bench. Oh, jeez. And he, catch, he catches... a, <laughs> a cool he story, ca- yeah. He catches... A, I forget what they... There was a name of... It was kind of a flight, and he... That, that was military plane <coughs> going someplace, and he was able to catch one of these flights going back to... It wasn't Fort Knox. But it's, not, it's one of those it moments. Wasn't it wasn't Fort Knox. Those are the moments. moments. What was the yeah. big... Oh, it was Fort the, Knox is where they made the gold, right? That's no, why Fort, well, Fort Knox is where I took basic, and that was a tank, uh, primarily a tank base. McClellan was Chemical Corps, but there was another big one that was really infantry that he was at, and I and I mean really well was known. It, what state? What were we I can't remember, but I mean it was the big infantry. Not Lejeune. Camp, Camp no, no, in in this in the south east corner of America. Fort Bragg, Fort, Fort Bragg. Oh, oh, there you go. good job, dude. I'm just drunk, spouting shit. <laughs> where, where, <laughs> what, what state was Bragg in? I don't know. I just said it. Yeah, well, no, he. he as it far was as a, I go, it, it was a thing. We were we were about like five thirty in Chicago, where I'm going to Columbus, and he's got to go back to Fort Bragg or whatever airport is close to Bragg. Yeah. And he says, I think I'm going to try to see the Packers game. And off he goes. And as it turned out, he saw the Packers game, and he caught this uh, military flight back to wherever he had to go to near Bragg. And, I mean, he was that kind of guy. He would take a weekend off from wherever he was, even in Germany sometimes. He would fly back on one of these military flights to see Ohio State. So did you watch movies with your brothers? Did you guys go? Yeah, oh yeah. 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 It, it, it was sort of a thing that uh, we, we always had a great time going and talking about the movie afterwards, but in the movie itself, we never talked to each other. I mean, yeah. it was just a thing that we were there watching that movie and getting our own impressions and then the three of us would 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 walk back and um as i mentioned before we would see the horror films and we had maybe oh a mile we had to walk back and part of it was through woods and walking through the woods at night oh yeah at about you know 10 o'clock at night after seeing and a horror you've movie. just seen dracula <laughs> and frankenstein and the <laughs> right. wolfman uh, it was back, hair in the back of the neck was standing straight sure, up. Yeah, sure. Well, and then in an earlier episode, you had talked about uh, half that reason was because the monsters were so we're huge on the so screen. So huge on the screen. Uh, and no, that's I mean, why it, I think my, you know my sons were never that scared because they were so much bigger than the monsters yeah. on the television screen. Well, I think I think movies are... are they, I love the emotion they invoke. I love... That they bring us all together, whether with family or whatever. And I love that. You know what? We're we gotta end. But uh, the next episode, when we get back together in a couple weeks, I think we're gonna let's let's keep talking about movies. That's why well, you're all here. That's why real, we're here. Real with quickly, Fritz. I've got to say, yeah, my, yeah. my two brothers and I. One thing we hated was in the westerns and detective and cop shows was the hero would knock out or get get 
take care of the villain, and they would always leave the villain's guns <laughs> on the floor. And I mean, they listen, would run off. And you it. know what? We'll get into this in the next episode yeah. because Jamie Lee Curtis throws the knife in Halloween, one of my favorite movies of all time. But you know, we'll get into all that. But uh, keep watching movies. Watch them with your sons, daughters. Uh, it brings people together. It, it sparks these conversations. And we grew up watching Fritz because we love movies, and that's not going to change. So we'll get back to this next episode. Thank you for listening to Conversations with the Owl, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.